Hi and welcome. So this time around we're going to be taking a look at the Harbor Freight sandblasting cabinet again. Uh, after using it for a little bit, you'll notice that uh, media leaks out of everything, even though I added extra insulating material around the edges. So I think it's going to require silicon sealer or something like that. Especially bad down here in the corners underneath. Um, the light is uh, not great. I've got this outside uh, in my... Uh, uh, this the easement between my property and the next one and uh, the sunlight makes it very hard to read the light never worked properly I keep desiccant in here to keep the media dry but first uh, major complaint is that the take up never really works very well it constantly struggles with getting media into the blaster maybe only 10 to 20 percent of the whole time you're using it uh, do you actually get media so I'm going to modify this guy uh, there have been a lot of videos out there to modify it, pulling the media out of the bottom here, which I am going to also do. Uh, but I've got some slight changes. For one thing, I'm just going to leave the ability of this thing to uh, empty media out on its own uh, intact. <laughs> I, I'm not going to use a T, I'm going to use an elbow because there's no reason. You're never going to try and drain all the media out of a little three-quarter inch hole. You're going to want to drain it out of here. So... Uh, I'm definitely going to do that. Um, I'm going to move the air inlet from this side over to this side simply because it's more convenient for my supply. All right, so here we have the factory stock gun and all of its associated hoses and parts removed out of the device. Uh, this is the pickup tube, and it attached off of this guy of this 5 8 internal diameter, uh, 7 8 external diameter hose here, which... Uh, I bought some more of over on the side here. Interestingly enough, this is the pickup tube. This side goes down in the media. This side goes up and the hose goes over both these pipes. You notice there's an internal and external pipe with a slight gap around it. So that means that it would suck air around the outside of this, but it's not going to pull any media very effectively through that. And why would you want to waste the air pressure pushing media up this tube? I don't really understand, unless you're trying to create a secondary venturi right here. But that doesn't make any sense to me. I don't see why that would be a good idea. It seems like it would be better to pull all of the vacuum through the hose up the pipe. But this never worked well, so we're going for a solution similar to what other people have designed in the past. A lot of people, uh, this is the plate off the bottom of the... Uh, the blasting cabinet for emptying the media, and I want to make this still uh, usable to empty the media. A lot of people take uh, uh, like a three quarter inch pipe and mount it to the bottom of this guy like this, and they put a plug in this so you can drain the media out, but why would you ever want to drain the media out? You just have to open this guy up to drain all the media out, so I'm not gonna do that. So instead of a 90 here, I am uh, looking at using an elbow, and uh, gotta find the right elbow here. I bought a variety of things to try a, a diff, bunch of different solutions. So I'm going to have an elbow mounted out of the bottom of this because that'll funnel the media straight into the tube where I want it to go. And we're going to start with the simplest design, which is you have this elbow feeding a T. And in the T, there is a valve that lets air in. That's going to be this guy right here. I'm going to cut off the hose portion of this. I don't need that. And uh, that'll go to a barb that feeds the new hose. And maybe that'll work really well. But if that doesn't, then I am going to try a secondary idea, which is to take this guy that'll be attached here. And I will put another pipe sticking in here where I can put a little bit of compressed air. Now, I know a lot of people, including myself, who have sandblasting cabinets, don't have enough cubic, inch, uh, cubic feet per minute displacement out of your air compressor to run the sandblasting cabinet really efficiently. And adding a little more air could be problematic, uh, making your compressor cycle more. Uh, but I'm talking about just a little bit of air. So I'm talking about a valve. That's what these valves are for. Um, adding a valve and just a little bit of air just to give some of the media a push into the hose to let the Venturi do its job. So we'll try variations on that theme, see how it works. Uh, and uh, if it does, then uh, it's a big win for everybody. All right, so here's the rough assembly. Um, I bought extra lengths because Lowe's isn't terribly close to me, so driving there is a big pain. So it's easier to buy a few extra parts to give you options than it is to uh, go there, provided you can afford it. I totally get that uh, 
you know, some people will need to just get exactly what they want. And when I'm done with this project, I'll try and give you a list of the parts you need uh, to make that easier. I got a few sized barbs over here that are for the, uh, the different airline sizes I might want to use. And this is an attachment with an adapter to half inch pipe threading for quarter to get to these valves. That's not going to be used for this. This was in case I was going to use half inch uh, hose, which I decided I'm not going to do. So I'm going to use the 5 8 inch hose. And so I'm just going to put this together. Uh, this guy here, I'm just going to drill a hole in the center. This guy's going to go through. However, because these are tapered, you know, standard pipe threads are tapered. I need to make a spacer so that this will actually hold this guy in place on the bottom. The, the spacer will sit on top of here. So I need to get some material, bore a hole through it about this size and figure out, uh, you know, when this thing gets uh, more or less tight, how much of a spacer I'm going to need. It looks like it's uh, something like half an inch at least. All right. So I got the hole in here and, uh, I used an annular cutter to do it. So 1.1 hole, one inch hole. Actually, I made it 1.125. That's the uh, annular cutter size I had. This is where I'm gonna need the spacer because this will pull up tight long before it reaches there. So I need a spacer, at least that thick. And uh, you might be wondering why I didn't use the uh, sheet metal versions of this. It's because the set I got only goes up three quarters of an inch and I need one and an eighth. Of course, whatever you buy, you won't have the right size. That's just the nature of the beast. <laughs> All right, so I had some uh, scrap one and a half inch stainless and I put a bevel on here because the lip sticks a little bit down. Uh, the threads are smaller diameter than this lip up here. So put that like that. This guy will go like this and then I got to tighten it down and uh, we'll continue assembling from there. All righty, so here is the uh, assembled prototype version one. So this guy's tight in here. The sand media sits, uh, blast media sits above here and uh, drains down through here, goes through this loop. This allows air in. I cut off the pipe flange on the end because I didn't need that. So this guy here feeds media up to the gun into this port on the gun right here. And that port opens up into a general, general space in here that has a venturi. And the way the venturi works is high pressure air comes through here and it's throated down so that at this point right here, the velocity is very high. And then it's allowed to expand a little, and it only looks like it expands a little bit in here. Um, if you made this a little bit smaller, you could get more expansion, but less air volume. So it's sort of a trade-off, unless you also can bump up your pressure. Uh, but when, as air expands, uh, well, let me put it this way. High velocity air, which is passing through this little point, uh, is lower pressure than surrounding air, than lower velocity air. And so that creates a vacuum all the way around here, which sucks media up here. Um, they didn't leave a lot of spare space and there's not a lot of room for media to go around that nozzle. Uh, that's an interesting set of uh, design decisions they made there. So it's entirely possible. I will have to replace this gun at some point in time. Uh, but for now, we're going to uh, we're going to see if just this is enough to get reliable air volume through it. So here's my hose. I've got to drill some holes in the cabinet, and uh, when I'm done, I'll bring you back. I also need to install the light that I got, uh, two LED tubes, because the one that came with it was not anywhere near bright enough. Here is the assembly in its final installation. And uh, you'll note that I can still get to this lever and pop this open to release the media out the main trap door, which is a lot more efficient than using a T. I don't know why you'd ever want that. I think this creates a smoother flow, but I, I can't, don't quote me on that. It does sort of funnel the media right in there. Uh, the valve works best when it's all the way open as other people have found with their designs. And so you might ask why bother having a valve at all? And I would say the answer to that is, is I normally leave it off like it is now so that you don't let humidity in uh, when, you're, you, when, you're use, when you're not using the device because you wouldn't want your material to cake up. And you can see over here that right now the media is falling back down the tube, about halfway down the tube, actually a little more than that. And so you have to primer it by uh, letting air flow through. And once the venturi causes air to start flowing up this tube, it liquefies the sand and makes it flow very much like a liquid, uh, which really works out well. You'll notice I tested this out before and even though I caulked a bunch of locations, it is still leaking. Even up top here, 
same problem still some spots so when I'm using this sandblaster I still use a respirator let's take a look inside here I have my uh, my water absorption material in there and uh, that really helps me out because it keeps my media nice and dry so it'll flow there's the uh, fluorescent lights that I added to the top that point right down at my work. I originally was trying to mount them back here, but there just isn't enough room. I made these angle brackets that they're on. Uh, hopefully you can see that to mount them on this side, but it just really wasn't working out with these glove holders and all the bolts and everything. It's just, it was difficult to find a spot to put them. So I went for here and it seems to help a bit. And I can actually see in, even with the sunlight behind me, I can see in here now where I couldn't before. So that's a huge plus. The way the tubes route now, they route from this side, uh, punctured a hole in the side over there and in the side over there, just put tape over this one on both sides. And again, you can see the routing from down here, just going up and in. I noticed not too much leaking here. I get more leakage around the edges of this guy than I do out of the hole where I stuff the tube because the hole's pretty much the size of the tube, seven eighths of an inch. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go get my mask on and let's try sandblasting something. the advantages of sandblasting uh, this has been shown in other videos now I've touched these with my hands so this may not be a perfect uh, example but when you're doing painting prep normal material like this water beads up on this is the exact same came off the exact same piece as that and you can see how this wets out it doesn't it doesn't bead up and so when you're trying to apply paint paint to a surface you see how it will sheet off if you hold it at a slight angle. Take this one at a slight angle. You can see that the water beads up. That difference is the increased surface area and uh, oxide removal that allows paint to adhere much better. So as you can see, there's a big difference between that one and that one. So if you want to paint something, sandblasting prep is a very good idea if you want the paint to stick really well. Now I've got all these uh, high surface area pieces of mild steel that uh, I just got wet. <laughs> so they're going to want to rust very efficiently. One way to help that is to spray them with alcohol. And what alcohol does is when alcohol evaporates, it tends to take the water with it. Uh, so it's a good way if you want to uh, remove water from something, especially if you're using 99% alcohol because it's hygroscopic, which means it uh, is a water attractor. It's a, it has an affinity for water. So I didn't want these to rust. So sprayed them with some isopropyl. When the isopropyl dries, they will be dry as well and uh, I can avoid rust. Because anyone who's watched my channel knows that I hate rust. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of crazy about it. All right, so that about covers part one of this guy. Uh, this this works great. One thing I did find out is that I've got to loosen the cup holder, the ceramic cup holder, and pull it forward a little bit, which basically allows there to be more gap around where the Venturi uh, air uh, pipe goes and allows a little more sand to go around the outside. I found it works better like that. I think the, the gun design leaves a lot to be desired. I mean, it looks nice enough, but functionally it's sort of mediocre. Also, it leaks air. There is a valve uh, you can adjust here. I think you can take this off and adjust uh, whether the air is left on because this thing leaks air when it's off. But as you can see here, I just sandblasted this now. And unlike before where I struggled, maybe 10% of the time I'd get sand coming out of it. I got very consistent sand coming out of it this time. So that uh, seemed to be pretty effective. So. All in all, I think this first part of the project, adding a much better light and adding a, uh, a new system for feeding the, the, the grinding media uh, improved things significantly. Next up, I think we're going to have to do something about the gun because the gun kind of sucks. And I think these are the same conclusions other people have arrived at.
Uh, one thing I did notice is with the new method, you'll notice how little grinding media is down there. I don't actually use very much. I put a uh, maybe 12, 15 ounces rather than fill the bin up, you know, like with 10 pounds or something like that. Not even required. This uh, works great as is. So that's where we're at. Thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.